Ebenezer Scrooge throws the book at Donald Trump. China delivers money to Biden's front door. U.S. taxpayers are expected to bail out Ukrainian small businesses. And let's all go to the China Coal and Mining Expo. Stay tuned, everybody. Hey, for the best meat you have ever eaten, check out samsbutchershop.com. Go and shop around. When you go to checkout, enter the promo code Triple T for a 5% discount. Check it out. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the channel. Trailer Trash Tim here. How is your mama and them? I hope you're having a fantastic Thursday. We have got so much to cover today, so let's get going. I want to start with this. Uh, as you may have already heard, a Manhattan judge, this was in the New York Post, a Manhattan judge on Tuesday, two days ago, found that Donald Trump committed fraud by exaggerating the value of his wealth and canceled Donald Trump's business licenses, just canceled it, which could hamper his longtime company's ability to operate in the Empire State. This is in the New York Post. Manhattan Supreme Court Judge Arthur Engoran found that Trump, his family, and his business, the Trump Organization, liable for fraud, the key claim in New York Attorney General Letitia James' sprawling lawsuit. So this Trump is this judge is just trying to completely invalidate Trump and say everything you've ever done is bogus. You're just you're just fraudulent. Your dealings are all fraudulent, and we're just going to throw the book at you once and for all. I, I I wish that Donald Trump would just give New York the old Italian salute and say to heck with you people. I'm just going to Florida, or maybe some more state some state that is uh, redder. You know. Texas, Tennessee, Florida. He's in Florida, of course. That's better for him. But I, I would just shut Florida down. I mean, why bother with these people any longer? These people have it in for him. He's never going to get a fair trial anywhere that he goes. Like, I've got a couple more questions, but let me keep going. Trump replied to this on his uh, social media, Truth Social, and he said this, the widespread radical attack on me, my family, and my supporters have, have now devolved to new un-American depths. He's right about what he's saying here. Listen to this. We are rapidly becoming a communist country, and my civil rights have been taken away from me. He called Ingeron deranged, and he called James, uh, Leticia James, completely biased and corrupt, a completely biased and corrupt prosecutor. I want to go back to something he said about uh, the, the, our nation. He said, we are rapidly becoming a communist country and my civil rights has been taken away from me. Let me tell you something, folks. This is not hyperbole. He says we are becoming a communist country. He's exactly right. And I'm telling you, I'm tired of playing footsie about this kind of thing. Uh, because the fact of the matter is, I'm just going to come right out and puke it out. I'm just going to say it. Democrats are these. That's what they are. Let's stop just messing around the edges. They're Marxist. Barack Obama was a Marxist. That, you might as well say this. That's what they are. How could you say otherwise? This is what these people are. And Trump just nailed it. I mean, he called it out for what it is. That's what our country has come to. It's unbelievable. It's like... For so much of my life, I just don't want to just don't want to even think about the fact that that could be happening. That's exactly what's happening. That's what these people are, and Trump nails it. But the funny thing about this is, well, there's two things. Let me one num number one. Let me say this real quick. Every time something like this happens, there's always a uh, a uh, what do they call it? A silver lining to the black cloud. Every time something like this happens. Every time somebody pulls a stunt like this renegade judge pulls, Trump's poll numbers go even higher. Folks, I'm telling you, these people are doing everything in their power to keep him out of the White House. They are trying to do everything that they can to keep him from the election process. The people, judges like... Uh, I don't know if it's this specific judge or not. I know that it was Letitia James, I believe, this particular prosecutor who scheduled Donald's Trump, Donald Trump's trial. It was either for Super Tuesday or the day before Super Tuesday in March. 
I mean, come on. Is that like a coincidence? I don't think so. They are doing everything they can do, possibly, to keep him out of the White House. They have completely weaponized the Justice Department against him. There's no way in hell this man can get a fair trial. They're trying to do what they did to this man, to Trump, just without the bloodshed. Make no mistake about it. And I'm going to tell you something. If they're if all of their efforts come to naught, don't be surprised. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. I'm telling you, they 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 loathe Donald Trump. They loathe everything this man stands for. They they fear him. I would simply tell Donald Trump, uh, buddy, this time I've ho I hope you've learned your lesson. And if you do get back in the White House again, Trump was famous before his first term, uh, as far as I was concerned, for firing people. He had the Apprentice TV show, and he was always firing people. And I thought, well, that's good. As soon as he gets in office, maybe he'll start firing some of these people, but he didn't do it. He did fire Comey, uh, Comey James Comey, to his credit. But there were so many people that turned on him, people like Bill Barr and people like uh, Sessions out of Alabama, that just wouldn't do the job. Trump should have been firing people left and right, but he surrounded himself with bushies, and uh, re retreads from previous administrations. He needs to go this in this office this time with these blazing, firing people left and right, and drain the swamp once and for all, if it's possible to do at all. They're doing everything they can to keep him out of office. I want to show you a shot of this judge. What's his name again? Arthur Ingeran. Have you seen this guy? This is his picture. This is the judge that dr that dropped the hammer on Trump. This is, can you get a shot of that? Look at this guy. Now, I know you shouldn't judge people based on their appearance. I understand that. But would you want to meet this guy in a dark alley anywhere? All I'm saying is, if they did a Hollywood remake of the film, A Christmas Story, and they were casting for the part of Ebenezer Scrooge, I've got your man. I found him. He's right here. Arthur Ingeran. <laughs> This guy. Now, I've got one more question before I move along about this, and it's simply this. Now, I have to preface it by saying, look, I'm not, a, I'm not an attorney. I never went to law school. I'm not an authority on the law and how, how these things work. I, I readily admit that. I, I confess I don't know all the ins and outs and all the minutia of the legal process. But it strike, this strikes me as odd. Why is this judge, Judge Arthur... Why is Scrooge here? Why is he issuing this sort of ruling with regard to Trump? Why is he calling Trump Trump's activities fraudulent? Why is he revoking his business licenses in New York? Why is he doing to this to, to Donald Trump when there has been no trial? Does this not seem odd to anybody else? It seems strange to me. I mean, Trump hasn't had his day in court, and he's already getting the hammer thrown at him by Judge Arthur here. What's that all about? Aren't you supposed to have your day in court before people start doing this sort of thing and issuing retribution to you? I mean, he hasn't heard Trump's side of any story yet, and he's just issuing these edicts from the bench. Is that normal? I don't know. I confess. Somebody out there that has a, a maybe you're a legal scholar and you can help me out. I don't understand how he can do this without there having first been a trial. Isn't he kind of getting the cart before the horse here, or is it just me? Maybe it's me. I admit it. I don't understand it. But I'll tell you one thing. The deck is stacked against Donald Trump, and that is clear. It is clear the American system of justice, the Department of Justice, has clearly been weaponized about Donald against Donald Trump. How do I know that? I know that because they're bringing out all they're they're throwing out they're bringing out all the stops to prosecute Donald Trump, and they're not doing a blooming thing about the current occupant of the White House. Let's move on. Let's move on to good old Hunter, the little crack addled cokehead. Hunter Biden, the son of the occupant of the White House. This is in the Daily Mail. Get this. Hunter Biden's Chinese business partners sent $250,000 to Joe Biden's Delaware home. No, they sent it to his home. You got that? Hold, hold that thought. In 2019, bank records show as Republicans revealed the latest impeachment bombshell. 
The dis this disclosure marks a stunning escalation of the impeachment inquiry into the president. Hunter Biden was living at his father's house, this grown man living at his father's house. I left my father's house when I was 17. He was living there for two years following his divorce from first wife Kathleen Buell. The address was given for $250,000 in wire transfers from Chinese individuals who Hunter was doing business with in 2019. They sent it to Joe Biden's residence, okay? No red flags there, right? The payments came in two wire transfers to Hunter Biden, who listed his father's house in Wilmington, Delaware, as his own address. I wonder if Daddy knew about this. I wonder if the big guy knew about this. This revelation marks a stunning escalation of the investigation into whether Joe Biden benefited from Hunter's business dealings in countries including China and Ukraine. Gee, you think he did? I don't know. Let's forget the whole thing. Let's throw, throw the book at Trump. Let's forget all this, right? Joe Biden's Delaware home was listed as the beneficiary address on two wire transfers China uh, Hunter Biden received from uh, China. The first wire uh, was in July 26th of 2019 for $100,000 came from a Mrs. Wang Zin, X-I-N, who is listed on the website for Beijing equity firm BHR, BHR Partners. The second was allegedly from Jonathan Lee, L-I, L-I, the Chinese national hunter supposedly threatened over WhatsApp while Joe was in the room. Quote, this is, this is Hunter talking on WhatsApp to, to uh, Jonathan Lee. Quote, I am sitting here waiting for the call with my father. Qu unquote. Hunter said to Lee in the messages revealed by an IRS whistleblower. Uh, and it goes on and on. Uh, the, the party revealed, the GOP revealed evidence showing $24 million flowed from foreign entities to the Biden family between 2014 and 2014. 19. James Comer has uh, has been investigating the Biden family and their overseas deals, subpoenaed financial records from a specific about bank account connected to Hunter. BHR Partners is backed by the Bank of China Limited and was a joint venture between Hunter Biden's firm, Rosemont Seneca, and investment uh, firm, Baha'i Capital. Bank records don't lie. But President Joe Biden does, Comer said on Tuesday night. He continued, in 2020, Joe Biden told Americans that his family never received money from China. We've already proved that to be a lie earlier this year, and now we know that two wires originating from Beijing listed Joe Biden's Wilmington home as the beneficiary address when he was running for president of the United States. In other words... They just backed the FedEx truck or UPS truck right up to Joe Biden's front door and said, here's your money. No problem here, right, folks? Nah, no problem. No illegalities. Nothing unethical here. Nothing treasonous here. Now, the White House shot back about this, and they said uh, that it was this, the, they hit back at the latest claim saying it was a stunt. This is all just a stunt. There's nothing to see here, folks. It's all a stunt. You're, they're trying to distract from the looming government shutdown. <laughs> oh, yes, the government shut down. Lord, help us, the government might shut down. Good Lord, it'd be Christmas for me. Ian Sams, Biden's spokesman for oversight and investigation, said this, quote, Comer and uh, Republican Representative Jim Jordan should explain to the military service members living in Kentucky and Ohio, who will continue to do their jobs, even without their paychecks, why they are wasting their time attacking President Biden, Biden with debunked conspiracies instead of trying to avoid the calamitous consequences of the House Republican government shutdown. This is the exactly kind of extreme partisan politics the American people are sick and tired of. Oh, really? Well, I'll tell you what. You're right. I'm sick and tired of partisan politics. I'm sick and tired of politicians who won't grow a spine and do something about this treasoner, this treasonous individual that's sitting in the Oval Office. That's what I'm tired of, Mr. Sams. Uh, and you're concerned about the calamitous consequences of the Republican government shutdown. Oh, happy day, I say, if it shuts down. All this, by the way, is in addition to the 
$1 million a year that Hunter was paid for sitting on the board of the Burisma Corporation. Million dollars. This dude is making out left and right. Mr. Cokehead himself. And here we are, you know, and, and nothing is being done about Biden. This, this is just, uh, he says, Ian Sam says that we're wasting our time attacking President Biden. I tell you what we're wasting our time doing. We're wasting on our time waiting on somebody to do something about this, Mr. Sams. Let me move on. Oh, you people are going to love this, especially if you're an American taxpayer. I realize there's folks watching me in Europe and Canada and all in New Zealand and Japan and elsewhere, but you're still going to get a kick out of this. Uh, Eric Lindrum wrote this in, uh, where was this? I, I, uh, uh, it's in Breitbart. <sighs> hey, if you're a, if you're a sucker like me, if you're an American taxpayer, get this. You, it's, this, this might give you indigestion. Eric Lindrum writes uh, yesterday, the 26th, uh, or no, that was Monday. A new report claims that some of the American aid being sent to Ukraine is subsidizing small businesses in the country rather than helping in the ongoing war effort. As reported by Breitbart, roughly $25 billion worth of non-military aid has been sent to Ukraine since the war began in 20, February of 22, primarily for the purpose of supporting Ukraine's economy. That amount is in addition to $43 billion in military funding that has been sent in the same period, according to the report by CBS 60 Minutes. Of course, it's a lot more than that now. It's hundreds of billions. The $25 billion has gone to prop up, li listen to this now, it's gone to prop up small businesses in the war-torn country, including a designer knitwear company in the capital city of Kiev, which is nowhere near the front lines of battle. No, but it's going to be. The company's owner, Tatiana Abramova, justified the aid to her business by telling CBS that, quote, especially in the condition of war, we have to work, unquote. Or quote again, we have to pay taxes, we have to pay wage salary to our employees, we have to work, don't stop, she added. When she was asked how economic aid would help with the war itself, she simply said, quote, because economy is the foundation of everything, unquote. In addition to small businesses, American aid is also funding seeds and fertilizers for Ukrainian farmers, as well as covering the salaries of all 57,000 first responders in the country. In other words, hello, my fellow American taxpayers, you poor suckers. You're not just having to shell out money to Ukraine uh, in terms of military aid and military equipment and armaments. No, your money is also being sent to s prop up small businesses in Ukraine. Because as we all know, anybody that has a small business in America, well, they don't need any help. You know, anybody that starts a small business in America, they're part of the evil rich, right? That's who they are. They're the evil rich, and they need to pay, pay their fair share. There's no sympathy in America for the small businessman. Somebody who wants to start a business doing whatever, making widgets or making yo-yos or making muffins, uh, you're in the crosshairs of the IRS. If you're a small businessman, if you're somebody who's trying to establish and grow a small business and maybe create jobs, there's nothing for you. There's no sympathy from you from the Biden administration, but by God, we'll send billions over to Ukraine to prop up their small businesses because Ukrainian small businesses are far more important than American small businesses, right? Priorities we got here, folks, right? That's the priority. Let's help the Ukrainian small businesses. Now, listen, let me tell you something real quick, and I, I should have made this clear in previous videos, and I'll say it now. The fact of the matter is there are a lot of good and decent Ukrainian people, okay, who are caught up in the crossfire of this tragedy that is happening in our world right now, just as there are, and they, they have no say over what's happening in Ukraine, in this struggle between right and wrong, okay? They have no say in the struggle between right and a president who is supporting this, they don't want it. And my, my heart goes out to them. 
There's always collateral damage in times of war. Just like people like me in America are kind of collateral damage insofar as these decisions are being made in spite of our voices, okay? We're having to tolerate a, a inept, evil leader like Biden in the White House. None of us, I didn't vote for him, and nobody I know voted for him, but we're having to tolerate and suffer the consequence of having somebody like that in the White House, okay? So my heart goes out to, there are good Ukrainian people and many of these good Ukrainian people are just trying to survive, and some of them are trying to maintain their small businesses. And my heart goes out to them. But folks, listen, <laughs> there's they're struggling Americans who are trying to establish small businesses and make it in this Biden economy that has gone south for all of us. How do you think we feel about having no say in where our tax dollars are sent? It, it's just... It's just it, it is outrageous on the one hand, and it is very sad on the other hand. It really is. You know, if, if, if a well-off Americans could aid the common Ukrainian who's caught in the crossfire of this disaster, I think that's wonderful, and we should do that if we can. But the, the fact of the matter is, if you've got a nation, should your priority, should your top priority not be to help the people in your own nation? Should your top priority be to guard your border and not some other nation's border? Does that just not make common sense to anybody? All right, let me move on. I want to close with this. I love this story. Oh, this story is going to hairlip people like Lurch John Kerry and Al Gore and all the tree huggers here in the West. I found this story at a website called worldcoal.com. Everybody get ready. Go get your go get your luggage ready. Everybody pack it. We're, we're all going to take a big trip. We're going to go to, I think it's in Beijing. Everybody get ready. We're going to go and uh, have a, a big trip to the China Coal and Mining Expo 2023. Listen to this, everybody. Sit up and take, take note. According to this website, it's on worldcoal.com. China's 20th inter <laughs> I love this. China's 20th International Technology Exchange and Equipment Exhibition on Coal and Mining is the largest international coal and mining exhibition in Asia. In the 2021 20, uh, show, they had 750 exhibitors from 15 countries and regions participated at the show covering a floor area of 110,000 meters. It is China's number one event. Founded in the 80s, China Coal and Mining Expo has become the nation's premier trade event and has claimed a spot in the worldwide stage for its sector. <laughs> Do you already know what I'm going to be saying here? Held biennially to showcase the latest technology is recognized as China's most important global window for the coal and mining sector. CCME has witnessed China's rise as a technology giant and facilitated the transformation of China's coal and mining industries over four decades. Over 20 countries and regions of manufacturers, research institutes, and coal production enterprises participate in the exhibition. I better know who ain't going to be there. Debut their newer models and technology, as well as displaying equipment from both underground to open-air mining. It is also the nation's cho uh, choice venue for coal and mining machinery manufacturers to seek opportunities, explore new markets, build brands, identify new trends, and enhance peer dialogue. It is a must-participation event. It enjoys great publicity nationwide world and worldwide, putting exhi exhibitors in the spotlight. The media followed CCME closely for industry and product updates, featuring the exhibition, a series of technical seminars, as well as the Forum on Development and Status and Prospect of Coal Mining Machinery Equipment. CCME, that is the China Coal and Mining Expo, is recognized as the window of the industry's future where innovation meets with demand, an event not to be missed. Is everybody all in? We all want to go to the big coal expo in China? Oh my goodness. I'll tell you who's not going to the big China coal expo. 
John Lurch Carey is not going to go to the China Coal Expo. Got to have a bit of water. Hang on. John Lurch Carey is not going to get on his big gas guzzling jet. Gas paid for by the sucker American taxpayer to go to the Coal Expo. Al Gore's not going to the Coal Expo. Obama's not going to be going to the Coal Expo. Joe Biden's not going to be going to the Coal Expo. Of course, if he was there, he wouldn't know where he was anyway. Cacklin Cammy's not going. The Clintons aren't going to go to the Coal Expo. But I say bring it on. Isn't it not? Isn't it ironic? Isn't it ironic how historical Chinese, uh, uh, communist China is morphing or and embracing the principles of capitalism while the United States and all Western powers are embracing this. I mean, it's true. In America, we're shutting everything down. Do you remember when he ran for president? Barack Obama clearly stated he was going to shut down the coal industry. He's going to shut it down. We're getting rid of it. That's right. We're going to start doing it. We're going all to EVs. We're going to do, be doing batteries, even though... The production of electric vehicles does great harm to the environment. They're such freaking hypocrites. Biden wants to shut the coal industry down and kill American jobs. The first day in office, he killed the Keystone Pipeline because Lord knows all fossil fuels are evil. And the usage of fossil fuels is going to kill us all. So they're evil. We can't use gas. We got to use batteries from now on. And <laughs> And the Chinese are putting on the party ads and saying, hell, we're celebrating coal. We're having a big expo. Everybody, come on. We're going to have a party. China is not full of idiots in their leadership like we are. You know, uh, King Tim, you know, if I, were king, if I were king of the United States, I would be a, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would be a benevolent dictator. I would be great. Uh, to everyone in America, unless you're an evildoer, of course. Of course, if you were a Democrat, I wouldn't be too kind to you. I'd, I'd deal with you on the first day. But I'll tell you another thing we'd be doing. We're at King Tim in office. Drill, baby, drill. We'd be op reopening the Keystone pipelines. We'd be opening new pipelines. I'd be shutting down the EV plant. Well, I probably wouldn't do that. I don't, I'm don't. i all about free markets. But brother, we'd be drilling for gas. And I'd tell the automakers, your sanctions are lifted. Go ahead and start making the big gas guzzling engines again. We're going to celebrate fossil fuels. We're going to celebrate the internal combustion engine. We're going to dig for coal. Dig, baby, dig, and drill, baby, drill. China's, China wouldn't be getting, getting a one-up on me, brother. China is celebrating coal and fossil fuels, and rightly so. The, the the cognitive dissonance of these tree huggers in America is just, it's just rich. You know, they're out here worshiping nature, worshiping trees and, and eschewing fossil fuels and condemning anything that comes out of the ground. And no, you can't touch trees and you can't drill for oil and you can't, you can't do anything that harms the environment. But Brother China is going to town on it, and they are coming into their own. And I, I, let me tell you something. <sighs> Capitalism works. I don't know if it's a perfect economic system in the world or not, but I'll tell you one thing. It works a hell of a lot better than communism, as we are seeing firsthand. All right, folks. That's what I've got for you today. Sorry I went a little long, but hey. Some of you are telling me it's not that big of a deal. Listen, do me a big favor, if you will, please give me a thumbs up on this video. Please don't forget to do that. I am told it helps the algorithm, so give me a big thumbs up. Hit that button down below. If you have not yet subscribed to the Trailer Trash Tim channel, as long as you do not wear a face mask and as long as you are not an illegal alien, you are more than welcome to join our growing community. So hit that subscribe button down below, and we will welcome you with uh, open arms as long as you agree. Yeah, we need to be burning fossil fuels. Thanks everybody so much for joining me today. This is Trailer Trash Tim and I will see you tomorrow.